So to begin, let's start by just making sure our 3ds Max is set up correctly. So let's go here to the unit setup and ensure that we're in centimeters here and your system unit setup is also in centimeters, okay? That's really the only thing we need to do. So let's pull up our reference image here. I just Googled this one from uh, Google Images. Just type in pedestal sync in the image search and it'll come up. So the first thing we wanna do is make a reference plane. So let's go ahead and make a plane right here in our front viewport, all right? And give it one length and one width segment. Now the height is going to be about 400 and the width is gonna be the same. Okay, so we have this big plane right here. Let's go ahead and press M on the keyboard to access the material editor. Uh, create a VRA material and in the diffuse slot, standard bitmap, let's navigate over to our um, project folder here. So just go to your pedestal sync references and get a reference. Double click on the bitmap and press this show shaded material in viewport and then go ahead and drag and drop it on the plane. All right, so if we press F3 here and press G to get rid of the grid, you can see we now have our perfect plane. All right, so next what I'm gonna do is I know a standard pedestal sink is about 32 inches high or the equivalent of 81 centimeters. So let's go ahead here and just create a plane which is 81 centimeters in height, okay? Now what we can do is grab this image and just uh, scale it down. I mean, just so our sink is approximately the same height. All right, maybe a little more. Right there should be good, okay? So now we're good to continue with our image here. So let's just, um, start with the base here. So I'm going to use a box and get something like that. Okay. And let's see here. We just want to align this as close as we can. And let's give it, well, we'll do that all later. So let's just um, convert that to an editable poly here. Okay. So what I want to do first is you can see from the reference image that it sort of bows out a little bit in the front. So in this viewport, let's go ahead and press connect once and just grab this front point and just move it out like so. Okay. Um, now what we need to do is simply grab the uh, topmost polygon. Let's just bring them pretty close uh, to the bottom here. And we can actually go ahead and delete uh, these bottom two polygons. Loop this bottom edge, press R, and just scale it in a bit, just like that. Okay? That'll sort of create the base upon which our um, pedestal sink sits on. And let's just go ahead and drag that down just a little bit farther. Okay? And then drag it right up to about here or so. Okay? Now, let's use the bevel tool, and let's just start beveling this a little bit. So kind of come up here, and let's go ahead and just bevel inward right to here, okay? So now we have one main bevel there, and let's also uh, do another bevel all over the top, and just like that, press R, let's just go ahead and scale this down a little bit. We can actually come here and just press shaded in the viewport just so we stop getting um, any additional geometry that we don't want shaded. All right. And now in our edge mode, press F4 to view our edged faces here. It looks like we may have made a small mistake. So let's go ahead and grab this, connect, press W, and let's just drag this down. Okay, something right around here. We'll just scale it in and right back out. So something just like that, okay? So this is kind of what we're getting now, just a little sort of a stick. So going back to the top here, let's uh, grab this, use our bevel tool, and let's just start um, a small bevel here just to make this sort of the base of the sink. Okay, and you can press R and go ahead and just scale it appropriately. Now let's go kind of halfway up and we'll bevel that. Okay, and I'm just following that along on the right hand side of this image. And one more, just like that. And maybe bring that one down just a bit. Okay. 
Now what we need to do here is actually grab this front point and bring it back a little bit because the sink is um, you know, not fully rounded in that area. Okay, something like that. All right, perfect. Uh, now what we need to do is we know the back is pretty much going to be flat against the wall. So let's go ahead and grab the uh, back of the sink here. And we can uh, leave a little space, but we don't really need too much. So let's just pull this back and maybe give it a slight, slight curve. So something like that. So you'll have sort of a, a flat back uh, to your sink here. Okay? And you can edit it uh, as you, uh, you know, feel the need. Actually, I might just bring it back a little bit and go ahead and drag this entire unit forward a bit. Okay? So back into our edit poly mode here. Let's go ahead and insert uh, this a little bit. So we're going to insert to about here. Okay, now if we just extrude that real quick, we'll be able to see how close we are. So you can see we're still a little bit um, far. So we'll grow that, press R, and just go ahead and scale it in just a little bit more, just so we get about the same width um, in the front as we do in the picture here. Okay? So you can go ahead and um, grab those polygons and just move them downward. Okay, and you can move them right to about the halfway point here and press R and just go ahead and scale those all inward just like that. Okay, and actually what we can do is let's press F3 here for a moment, press W. We're actually going to bring this up and then scale it out just so we can get it kind of a deeper crease there at first. Now use your bevel, uh, drag it down and bevel it inward a bit. And a little more and one final bevel, kind of like that. Actually looks like we went too far there, so maybe something along those lines should work. Alright, so that looks not so bad. So let's go ahead here and what do we want to do? Let's go ahead and maximize this view here. Let's apply some smoothing groups. So the first one will be here. So we're just going to press auto smooth. Okay. Uh, the second one will be here. So auto smooth. Um, the third one will be sort of this um, top area. Right, so we can auto smooth that and grab these and you can grow them a couple times here. So grow, 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 and we can go ahead and auto smooth that. And then we just want to get uh, these couple polygons here. So we can create a selection uh, just around the back. And if we press the grow button once, we should have all of that. And go ahead and auto smooth that as well. Okay, so we have basically a couple different smoothing groups on this. Um, now if we go ahead and apply a chamfer modifier, and we do the input options as smooth edges, you'll see we only get, um, let, let's see here, unsmooth edges is what I want, sorry. So we'll only get sort of smoothing on certain edges where we put the smoothing groups on. Let's go ahead and use the quad chamfer with a tension of 0.5. Yeah, that'll give us sort of rounded corners, and maybe we'll you do uh, two sections. It should work out pretty good for what we want. All right, now let's go ahead and apply a turbo smooth on top of this. Okay, we'll give it sort of two iterations and just see sort of what we're getting here. All right, so not so bad, but we do need a bit of work. So after the chamfer modifier, uh, let's go ahead and I'm debating if this is the way we actually want to do it. Let's think here. Because from the image, it looks like we need some different chamfers sort of here. So let's do an edit poly. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and select a couple of these edges here. OK, 
Okay, and hit loop. So we have kind of those selected all the way down. And let's apply an additional chamfer modifier. And we're just going to do this on selected edges. Okay. Now if we go into our turbo smooth, we should have uh, some sort of interesting results. Not quite what we're looking for, but we are getting closer. All right. I think we're actually going to take a different path here. Let's go ahead and delete that poly, delete that chamfer. So we're back to our base mesh here. I think we're just going to do this by hand. So grab all of these lines and loop them. Okay. Uh, we can grab the top and the back and loop them. Uh, we need to grab this one and loop it, as well as this one and this one and loop them. Okay. I think so we missed click there. Let's control click and control click and loop. All right, that should be all of the major edges, I believe. So let's go ahead and press chamfer on these. And let's see, we want two segments, should be good. And let's see what we have. We have some interesting things going on here. We're going to do a quad chamfer with a tension of 0.5. So we get something like that. I think we actually need to select this bottom portion of the sink as well. I'm doing, actually, I don't think we want to select uh, the inside of the sink at all. I think we want to let that just sort of be by itself. So I'm just going in here and unselecting all the edges uh, inside the sink. I actually want to say one segment is probably enough for what we need. Alright, so let's um, Interesting. This looks like it's selected, but it must not be. All right. So now that we chamfered that, now let's check out our Turbo Smooth and see what we get. All right. So there we go. We kind of got a, a nice looking uh, result there. Although I'm not as happy with these edges here. So let's go back to our Editor Poly. Undo that. So undo the chamfer. And then we should still have the edges selected here. Maybe we do need to select uh, these edges in here. All right, so let's just go ahead and grab these. All right, chamfer. And maybe do just a slightly larger chamfer. Something like that should work. And now let's see what we've got. All right, much better looking, except we still, I think we do need to grab uh, the bottom edges here as well. So let's just grab these. All right, chamfer, press OK. And there we have it. Now we've got our basic uh, sort of pedestal sink model. Now. I want to say that our sink is a bit low. So we're going to go ahead here and in the front view just grab uh, some of our model here and let's just raise it up just a bit. Okay, something like that. And then grab these. Maybe we can just scale them out a bit. Okay, something like that. Alright, there we go just because our sink uh, seemed a bit small for what it was. Although, now I think it does need to come in just a tiny bit. So let's go back to our front viewport here and grab the majority of our vertices. Press R and we're just going to scale it inward on this axis just a tiny bit. Alright, there we go. We're looking much 
much, much better. Now we do have this sort of little shape right here. It actually looks pretty cool, but I think we should probably uh, fix it. So just grab those vertices, make sure we don't have any extras. Press W, and just go ahead and move those back a little bit, kind of like that. All right, and let's actually grab these and these. Make sure that's all we've got, and get rid of that. And then get rid of the bottom ones there. Let's go ahead and just drag these forward just a bit, just to give it a um, solid base there on the bottom. And then grab this, this one, and that one. All right, and we can go ahead and drag those, oops, watch out, drag those back as well. And that'll just open up our sink a bit more. So if we go to our Turbo Smooth, you can kind of see uh, what we've got now. We're looking really, really good. So that nice defined edge. And actually, we can probably go in the front view here, grab that and that, press R, and scale it up a bit. Let's see what that did for us. Here we the Turbo Smooth. What I'm trying to do is soften that edge just a bit, and I think I've succeeded there. Yes, I did. All right, so we softened the edge there just a tiny bit. Okay, so let's go ahead and get our model here. And yeah, so let's press W and just move it over a bit. So you can see we have sort of a hole here in the sink. So let's attempt to create that in our model as well. I think an easier way of doing this may be just to loop this, apply a chamfer like so. Okay. Let's chamfer it. And then grab this ring connect. Is that what I want to do? Not really. Okay, now we can grab these two, chamfer, and maybe bring it out a bit. Okay, let's go ahead and grab these, and maybe we can just extrude these back without causing uh, too much trouble. So now what we should be able to do here is grab this edge and this edge, loop it, and unselect those, control backspace, and see what that gives us. All right, not terrible, but. I think we can work with that. Okay, so, so now that we've got the main uh, pedestal modeled here, let's go in and add a few additional details. So let's click on this vertice here, and let's go ahead and chamfer it. All right, something like uh, that ought to do. And then we can grab that polygon, inset it just a little bit, Something like that. Grab the extrude and extrude it back just a tiny bit. And do one more. And that should be perfect. So now, if we smooth that out, you'll see we have a perfect little uh, hole there that we can utilize. So that can be you know, sort of a drain uh, to the sink, and you can cover it up with whatever you want. And we also need to make one on the bottom here. So let's just check out what we've got here. And I think we can 
let's see. I don't want to insert a random vertice in there, so we can go ahead and grab uh, this edge, this edge, and this edge, and we can connect them once right there in the center. Grab that vertice and just do the exact same thing to create our uh, drain hole that we need. So we just go ahead and inset and then just use our extrude modifier a few times uh, just to create our geometry. All right, and you're never really going to see that, but it's just good to have there. Right, so there we go. So now we got uh, just you know a nice little uh, hole in our sink that doesn't really go anywhere. Uh, we can actually just go ahead and delete that bottommost polygon. Don't really need it at all. Okay, so there we go. We've got that uh, part of the sink done. Now, I mean, you could do a square if you want, but a circle is just a little bit easier to do. And I actually tend to like the look of them better. I've never really seen a square one in real life. So let's go ahead and model a um, sink sort of thing here on the bottom. And what I'm talking about is like this little thing that just sort of goes in the hole. So to do that, we're just going to go ahead and grab a cylinder here. We're actually going to do this sort of in a large mode here first. Um, so let's go ahead and model the top. So I just have 18 sides in this and get rid of all the height segments here. All right, so grab our edit poly here. Uh, we're just going to scale that down just a bit on the top. All right, go to your bevel tool, just sort of bevel it up and up a little more just to make sort of a cap. And we can come here, drag it down like so. Okay, make it real small and then uh, give it some geometry. So click once, kind of come back, click, click again. And now let's sort of come back out a little bit. So like this, and we can come up, maybe something like that. And I believe our normals are flipped now, so we'll have to, let's actually undo that there. Um, so we'll leave this part like that, and go ahead and create another cylinder here. So just about, about that big should do. Okay, something like that. And go into your top view, press uh, F4 here, and just go ahead and you know line those up. You can use the align tool if you want, but I just prefer to do things a little bit by hand just to give it more of a natural feel. Convert that to an editable poly. Let's go ahead and use our bevel tool and kind of create sort of a thick gap here. All right, so maybe bring this down just a bit more. Okay, so we're going to keep beveling this. So maybe coming out to about here. Almost all the way at the surface, right about here. Okay, kind of round the corners in. Alright, and then kind of start coming in. And something like that ought to work nicely. Okay, so we've created a little shape like this. Let's go ahead and press R and just scale it inwards so it fits fairly close. I'm going to add a turbo smooth modifier. That'll smooth that up and add one to this as well. All right, perfect. So you kind of see we've got this little uh, sink stopper mechanism here that we've created. So now all we need to do is just grab this. Uh, go into your front viewport here, press W, and just move it up here and move it into position. Let's go ahead and scale it way down, okay? So I'm just going back into my perspective here. And let's just sync this about where it should be here. So we have, let's see, let's turn this adaptive stuff off so it stops that. All right, so it should come just above the sink. So kind of something like that. So you can see we actually need to uh, increase our ch 
chamfered hole here. So just go ahead and select these points, press R and scale them up. Right, something like that should do. Alright, and let's see how that looks. I guess we need a slightly bigger uh, chamfered zone still, so keep scaling. Alright, looks like we're almost there. I guess the other option is we could just delete a big hole out of this. Is that what I want to do? Probably not. Let's see. I'm just trying to think of the best way. I think the best way actually is just to make this. Uh, so that fits pretty good. And this is the one that sort of has the problem. So we'll just bring it up a little bit. And then bring this down and just sort of set it right in there. Alright, something like that. And that still looks a little big. So let's just go ahead and scale that down like that. And we can grab these vertices in here and scale them back just a bit. Right, and that actually looks like it'll solve the majority of our problems. This W and maybe sink it in there a bit more. Perfect, just like that. So now you've kind of got that sync stopper look. And um, you can actually uh, just drag that up a little bit, just so it's elevated a tiny bit. And if we want to, we can even isolate the selection for here for a second. Go to our editable poly, uh, grab that, and just delete it. And then delete our bottom polygon. And Grab this, loop it, and just shift drag it down a little bit. And shift drag it down some more. Just so that way you actually get a real hole in there. And if you end isolation mode, um, it doesn't really help you very much, but it might help you a little bit. Alright, so I'm going to say that'll about do it for the sync portion. So let's go ahead and model the uh, top bits there now. So the first thing we have is basically just a box. So we'll just use auto grid on this plane right here. And just go into the front viewport, F3, and just make sure we're about the same size. So we are a bit big right now. So I'm just going to press Control Alt Q, one, and we'll just size it just perfect, just like that. Okay, so these modern ones are actually uh, fairly easy to make. So we need to make it a bit more skinny here, something like that. All right, and let's just go ahead and drag it up to about there, and then we can. Press extrude here and extrude a little bit. I grab this and extrude it out just a tiny bit, kind of like that. We'll use an inset here to make sort of a little um, notch. Okay. And extrude that back in a little bit. All right, and maybe just drag it into position there. And extrude again a little farther back and extrude one more time just like that okay and now if we go ahead and take a look at a reference image here I'm just gonna move this out of the way a bit you can see it actually slopes down so let's go ahead and grab our top here and just slope it down kinda like that make sure you have uh, the entirety of your head here. So something like that. OK. 
Okay, and now I think it does need to come forward a bit more, so I should go ahead and drag it out. Something along those lines. Okay, and I want to say we're still a bit too thick, so let's just, well, make sure we're pretty close right there. All right, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and select some critical edges here that we need to chamfer. So we're just gonna grab sort of all of these ones. Okay, grab the edges here. And this one. All right, you don't have to worry so much about the bottom, but we'll still grab these. And I think we also want to grab the inside edges here. But I fear like that will cause issues when we loop it. Eh, that should be fine. But we'll delete those anyway. Okay, so I think that's all the lines we need. You can press J just to get rid of those lines there. Let's go ahead and chamfer this. I do see it sticking out the bottom, but try point one, uh, point zero 0.5 seems like it will work for us. So let's go into our left hand view here, press F3, and just go ahead and grab these and just drag them sort of far back in there just so you can't ever see them. Alright, and that should work perfect. So there we go, now we've got that, so we can end isolation mode and go back into our front view here and just align this right up where it was. All right, perfect, just like that. And now what we can do is just try to make the handles, which are gonna be very similar. So in fact, I think I can reuse this piece of mesh here. So let's just go here, and we have the back face. Just press grow a couple times. And let's just delete everything up until there. I'll grab this edge here and cap it. Okay. Let's press E and with A for angle snap, we're going to rotate this 90 degrees. Okay, and just grab one of the edges here. And let's just move that entire edge in just to kind of make a little handle shape. Okay. And then in the front viewport, let's just move it over. Okay, we can go ahead and drag this down so it's the right size. All right, so I think we're probably just about good there. Grab this and move it. Now this edge is kind of uh, beveled like that. And these are probably a bit shorter, something like that. All right, looks pretty good. Now these are on um, some cylinders here, so let's go ahead and just create a cylinder on top. Something like that ought to do. Convert it to an editable poly here. Grab the top and the bottom and control click edges. Chamfer. Just give those a slight, slight chamfer. By 0 0.05 again. All right, and apply turbo smooth to that. Two iterations should be more than enough. Back into your front viewport, and we're just gonna bring this down just so it has a hint of a presence, something like that. And just center uh, our mesh up on that. Okay, you can go in the top viewport if you want a different view. All right, so just make sure we're pretty close to center there and grab it and maybe drag it back a ways. We don't want it to be too close. Oops, sorry there. I don't want to render any of the texture right now. All right, so that looks probably about good. And now what we can do is just grab both of those using the move tool, hold shift, copy, go ahead and mirror them. And then in the front viewport, just drag them so they match over here. All right, excellent. So I think at this point we can delete our reference image here. Control A, and let's just go ahead and make these gray.
turn off our edged faces with F4 and let's see what we've got. So we have a pretty awesome looking um, little pedestal sink here. Uh, we've got basically all of the key elements and most of the, uh, the piping actually runs through the bottom there so you don't need to worry about anything. Let's go ahead and just do some basic uh, materials for this. So the first thing is we're going to be using V-Ray so go to your render settings and set to V-Ray. You can use Mental Ray as well if you like. And let's go ahead and add a V-Ray material. Okay, double click here so we can see it. And double click. So I'm going to diffuse color, make that basically all the way white. We're going to give it some pretty good reflections, maybe 80. And you can actually turn those on there. And the glossiness will be probably about 0 0.9, 0 0.85. 0 0.85 seems just about right. And that's about all you need for the sink. So go ahead and um, apply that to our sink. Okay, so select everything over here and deselect the sink holding alt. And let's go ahead and make another VR material here and go ahead and assign that right away using this button. And we're actually going to make a chrome material here so get the diffuse to be all black and set the reflect to basically 100% so you'll see you're getting all the reflections there and in your glossiness maybe point uh, nine eight something along those lines and I think that should do pretty good I don't believe we need any this is for glass so leave that at black and the Fresnel reflections we can uh, bump that up to maybe something like 18 that'll give us that nice shiny chrome appearance that we're looking for all right now let's just um, set up a quick scene we can render in so I'm just going to go ahead and, let's see, make something like this, okay, and convert that to an editable poly here. Uh, just grab all the edges on the back there and hold shift drag and bring them up, kind of making like a little alcove you usually find uh, these sinks in. And then we can grab this edge here. So to shift drag it out, and same with that one, and with this one, grab these two edges, and shift drag them up, kind of like that. We can just weld these two points here, using our weld tool, there you go. And that should be a fairly good approximation of what we need. All right, so let's go ahead and add a physical camera here in the top viewport, something like that. Go to your camera, and we'll just position this strategically so we can sort of see our sync. Kind of like that should be good. Uh, now select our wall here back in perspective. Grab all the edges, control A. Uh, chamfer, and we can give them a chamfer with what three or four segments, and it doesn't really matter. We'll just do a standard chamfer for now and press OK. That'll just even out um, uh, the corners a little bit, and you can see we have some issues down there. But let's actually just address those. We don't need to chamfer that or that or that for that matter. And let's go ahead and get rid of the top ones. So now we can chamfer happily. Okay. So press or go to your render menu here and common custom size HDTV just do 480 by 270 for now. Shift F for save frames so you can actually see what you're rendering. Let's go ahead and grab a VR material here. Um, diffuse, let's make this sort of uh, your typical eggshell color you see in a house. So just a soft, soft off-white. And assign it. It will have a little bit of reflection, but extremely glossy, kind of like 0 0.7, 0 0.6-ish. Okay. 
So now, back into perspective here. So let's grab our physical camera here. And we can set the exposure at about 18 should do. Maybe we'll do a light V-Ray, V-Ray Sun. And just go ahead and drag something in like that. Let's go back to our camera here and change it to shaded. Let's just do a quick test render here and see what we So we forgot to change our render uh, settings here. Oh, we're still rendering apparently. Uh, just go to V-Ray, change this to Adaptive Subdivision. You can actually see we're not seeing anything here. That is partially because our sun's on the wrong side. But I'm actually debating. I don't think we need the sun. Let's just go ahead and do this with some standard V-Ray lights. So let's assume that we have a sort of a, you know, a sphere light. Kind of right here, kind of like a light fixture. Press W. And let's just move it up right about here. And shift drag it once, instance, and make two copies. And then here we can change this. The color is fine, multiplier may be fine. Let's just click here and we're going to enable our GI and just change this to a radiance map and setting of low, light cast setting of 200 just for our test renders. And let's go ahead and re render this. Okay, so you're beginning to see something here, but let's go ahead and boost these to maybe 300 and uh, see what that does for us. So we can see a little bit more. Um, let's grab our camera here and maybe change it to 16 for our exposure value and do a re-render. Alright, so we're getting closer. Uh, let's go ahead and try 14. All right, ooh, 14 is coming along nicely. So I'm going to say that is about it. Maybe go to our um, lights, uh, go to temperature, and maybe change this to something along the lines of 5,000, a bit of a warmer color, just so we can bring out the sink a bit. Perhaps make the multiplier 500 here. All right, there we go. Now we're really beginning to see it. I also want to have just a bit of backlighting, kind of as if uh, there was a door or something. So let's go ahead and add a V-Ray light sort of over here. Oops, watch out. Make sure you have it as plain. All right, and just drag it in. All right, well, let me change it there. So just make a plane here. That is kind of odd why it's doing that. All right, well, we'll just do a plane and then press R and we can scale it. Sort of how we want it, I'm hoping. Well, actually, I kind of like the image the way it was. All right, so actually, we'll, we'll put the VR light in. So just make sure you have auto grid um, unchecked and just grab a light like that. Press E and we're going to bring it over here, I think, and rotate it. 180 degrees and just make sure that it's set to a higher color there. We're going to give this uh, 6500 here so it's sort of a brighter uh, blue color. And let's go ahead and re-render and see what we get. So you can see we're getting some excellent um, shadows and such there but I think that last light was probably a bit too much so we're going to dial that one down to maybe 250 and give it a quick re-render. All right, um, so I'm gonna say that'll be about it. Let's go ahead and do one final render. So just grab your render setup here. Uh, change the preset to high, subdivisions to a thousand, and go to your output size and make it large and press render. All right, so here's our final image. It looks um, just like a pedestal sink would. Um, if you put some additional objects in the scene, you'd be able to see some more reflections here on the bottom. So, you know, play with tiled images and such uh, for the floor and maybe a different texture for the wall, you know, some towels and such. But uh, this is a prop you can pretty much just drag and drop anywhere and it's really easily adjustable. 
So I uh, hope you guys learned something. Um, please make sure to like and subscribe to my channel, um, as well as you know share my uh, videos wherever you see them. Um, also be sure to check out the other architectural design videos I have. I've done ceiling fans, um, blinds, you know doorways and such that you can populate your scene with. And um, you know please if you get a chance comment on this video and tell me you know what else would you like to see. Um, do you want to see some additional props? Uh, you know you know what do you want to see towels? Uh, just let me know and I'll see if I can create a video for it. So with that being said, I hope you guys had a great time. I will see you next time and happy modeling.